Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video, I just want to talk about um, what we've experienced in North America uh, for the so-called meteorological winter, which is December, January, February. So both across the uh, U.S. and across Canada, we've had record-breaking temperatures. So I'm just going to talk about some of the details because there was a, a report that just came out on the U.S. from NOAA, and there was also data released from um, Environment Canada about what happened in Canada. So let's just chat about what's happening. <clears throat> And if you live in either of these, uh, you know, if you live in North America, you've been able to experience these sort of effects with your own eyes, you know, with your own experiences. Okay, so I've uh, still used Twitter slash X quite a bit. And um, this is the new, my new video that I released earlier today on the state of the oceans, the Copernicus report, which is a lot of information on oceans in the, in, in the Northern hemisphere, mostly from a European perspective. So this is the article I tweeted out just in, the US had its warmest winter on record. The season was capped off by the third warmest February recorded. And a US climate report came out which I'll, from NOAA, which I'll discuss. And also, um, just a couple of days ago, I posted this tweet. This winter was the warmest in Canadian records by a huge margin. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just phenomenal temperatures. And Canada being higher latitudes than the U.S., you know, as you move up to higher latitudes, the uh, there's something called temperature uh amplification so the higher latitudes you know think of the arctic for example there's arctic temperature amplification which is significant so as you move to higher latitudes you get even higher temperatures and the records were broken by even larger margins in canada than the u.s okay so let's have a look at the report the u.s report so the u.s had its warmest winter on record um february was the third warmest this is an image uh, from showing uh, Lake Michigan in St. Joseph, Michigan. Normally you'd have ice covered coasts, but the persistent warmth um, basically caused a steady decrease in ice coverage across the Great Lakes this winter. And it actually reached a historical low of 2.7% of, of um, water surface covered on February 11th. So some of the highlights from the NOAA US climate report that just came out are, okay, so February 2024, the average temperature across the contiguous, that's connected US last month, was 41.1 degrees Fahrenheit, or 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit above the 20th century average. Divide by 1.8 to get Celsius, and um, this is about uh, uh, three, four, um, 1.8. It's four, four degrees Celsius above the 20th century average. Four times 1.8 is uh, 7.2. Okay, so four Celsius to compare it to the Canadian numbers. Um, February was the third warmest in the 130 year climate record. The persistent winter warmth resulted in a steady decrease in ice coverage across the Great Lakes. It reached a, they reached a historic low ice coverage of 2.7% on February 11th. That's the lowest amount of ice coverage on record during mid-February. Uh, precipitation um, was a bit below average, but again, it was again, but it was basically separated east to west. And I'll show you some maps from the report of that. So meteorological winter is December 2023 to February 2024. So the meteorological winter was the warmest winter on record. The average temperature was 5.4 degrees 
Fahrenheit above average. It was 37.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is well above the 32 degrees Fahrenheit freezing point. Um, total winter precipitation was uh, slightly above average for the meteorological winter. Okay, um, there was um, there was a billion dollar disaster um, January 8th to 10th, sudden southern tornado outbreak and an east coast storm impacted more than a dozen states. So since 1980, the U.S. has sustained 377 separate weather and climate disasters. Overall damage and costs reached or exceeded one billion in each of these separate disasters. Basically, the total cost of the 377 events exceeded $2.67 trillion. So huge ramifications of climate on the U.S. The U.S. is very vulnerable to um, the, these uh, extreme events. So this is some selected or significant climate anomalies and events in winter of 2024, basically. Okay, so lots of snow in Anchorage, Alaska, unseasonably warm temperatures. So there were tornadoes spawned. Wisconsin had its first February tornado on record. Uh, persistent warmth up in this region of the Great Lakes. So the coverage was a historic low 2.7%. Nor'easter brought heavy snow um, mid-February. Some areas had their heaviest snow in years. Of course, in Texas, we have the Smokehouse Creek wildfire going on. Very, very hot, very, very dry temperatures. So we had record fires there. Of course, California experienced the atmospheric river events, which brought heavy rain to, to you know, LA region and parts along the coast and heavy snow up in the um, mountain areas. Okay, so you can see things there. Um, these atmospheric rivers that hit the, drenched the west, so there was a series or chain of atmospheric rivers. They brought heavy rain and snow to the western U.S. during February, caused significant flooding, powerful winds, landslides, and power outages in parts of California. L.A. received more than 12 inches of rain during February. That's about three times its February average resulting in the wettest February in decades for the city. This is a concern for fires in the winter because when we get lots of rainfall um, in, in the, um, in, in, sorry, this is, this is a concern for wildfires coming up in the summer because when we get lots of rainfall in the winter, the vegetation sprouts up and grows. And uh, when, if, the, if the climate turns very hot and dry, the vegetation that has grown up um, dies off and there's lots of fuel for, for fires. Um, there was a, the record February tornado. Um, Wisconsin had its first February tornado on record, the EF2. Um, and the wildfire, the Smoke House Creek wildfire in Texas and Oklahoma burned more than a million acres um, in February you know, just last month, February 2024, and it was the largest wildfire in Texas history. So all of those things were ha are happening in the U.S. And if we go to the more detailed report uh, from the National Centers for Environmental Information, um, assessing the U.S. climate in February 2024, um, it was the warmest winter on for the contiguous U.S., and the record wildfire claimed more than a million acres in the Southern Plains, Texas and Oklahoma. And there's some interesting, you know, I've talked about these, but there's some interesting plots here. So this is the mean temperature departures from average for February, 2024, based on, you know, a hundred year average period, 1901 to 2000. And you can see temperatures exceeding the, the norm by 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit up in, the, in this region and then a bit less here and fanning out less here. Okay, you could also look at the um, meteorological winter of December to February and you can see, you know, the, the trend is very much similar. So this is just trend in February is, you know, we've seen it since in, in December, January and February. 
you know, 10 degrees Celsius above the, um, above the average for those three months. Precipitation, depended on whether you're on the east or west of the country, you know, very, very dry on the east. This is the percentage of, um, of, of normal average precipitation. Okay, so some areas extremely dry and other areas very, very wet, especially down in California from the atmospheric rivers. And these rivers can extend out. All right, so, you know, a tale of two continents, if you like. Uh, precipitation percent of average. This was for February and this is for um, the meteorological winter. So it's a bit less um, noticeable, less extreme. Okay, so... There's a lot more detail, uh, you know, in the actual report. Okay, so basically what's going on in Canada, same sort of thing. Okay, the, this is, uh, the numbers in Canada are just crazy. Okay, this winter was the warmest in Canadian records by a huge margin. So the average temperature in Canada for December, January, and February, the meteorological winter, was more than five degrees. This is Celsius, warmer than historic norms. And it combines data from widespread regions across Canada, including like Nunavut, Ontario, PEI, you know, across many areas, you know, across Canada, basically, it's a Canadian record. So Canadians from all across the country could feel it, but numbers make it official. This past winter was the warmest in Canada's records by a stunning margin, according to Environment Canada data shared by a senior, senior climatologist. So the average temperature for December, January, and February, it was more than five degrees of Celsius warmer than historic norms. It was actually 5.2 degrees Celsius. Um, and this is a shock, basically, to people at Environment Canada, including David Phillip, Phillips, senior climatologist. He said the anomaly is so extreme and so far above the previous record that seeing it was a shock. It stands out. It's an outlier. There's absolutely no denying it. So Canada's records go back to 1948. That's a 76-year record. The previous warmest winter um, in that over that whole record was 2009 to 2010. It was 4.1 degrees above the historic norm, but this past winter was 5.2 degrees Celsius above the norm, breaking the old record by a full degree, breaking it by 1.1 degrees. That's a huge difference. Normally we see, you know, differences of a tenth of a degree or something, and that's considered large or significant but these numbers are wow. And uh, looking at the US numbers, if you do the conversion to Celsius, it's, the US was about four degrees Celsius above, above the norm, which sort of matches the previous record in Canada to you know, 4.1 degrees, but Canada blows it away this, win this past winter in terms of temperature record. Now, the stunted winter is mostly due to two factors, it says here, right? The El Nino, which is a natural cyclical climate pattern that turns up the global thermostat, right? Climate variability. And, but of course, that's layered over climate change. Okay, so let's, a little bit about the El Nino. Well, the current El Nino is still ongoing, but it peaked in December and it's now gradually weakening. It's classified as strong, one of the five strongest El Ninos on record. It wasn't as strong as two very strong recent events, the 1997 to 98 El Nino and the 2015 to 2016 El Nino. But regardless of the strength, it would be a mistake to attribute the exceptional warmth of this winter and the entire past year to natural patterns alone. Okay, so every month since June last year has set a new monthly temperature record. 2023 was by far the warmest year on record. So the El Nino contributed to these record temperatures, but the greenhouse gases, heat trapping greenhouse gases are unequivocally the main culprit. The contribution of human induced climate change probably larger than the contribution of El Nino to this year's warm temperatures. 
They talk about the U.S., which I also, which I mentioned in the report, and the massive wildfire in Texas. Okay, so statistics confirms what Canadians and Americans are thinking. You know, if you talk to Canadians, they may not know that this is the warmest, but it sure felt like it. Other than a brief frigid period in Western Canada, there's no, there was no winter weather, it just didn't come. And Canada's built on cold and snow. You know, here's one of the ski resorts. I think this is um, Collingwood, the Blue Mountain Ski Resort, very popular just north of um, Toronto. Um, you can see the, the lack of uh, snow cover. So Ontario businesses offering winter recreation have taken a big hit this year. Ski hills, snowmobile retailers, ice fishing, public skating rinks. They're all scrambling. They're all scrambling to adapt or they sim basically they simply close shop entirely for this winter. The famous Rideau Canal in Ottawa for skating managed to eke out a handful of days where sections of the skateway were open and I managed to, to go on the canal twice. Once walking Newton, which turns out it's illegal. You can't walk your dogs on the canal. Uh, but I got away with it and went skating. Um, last year, last year it never opened at all. So, you know, this year it was open for a few days. The, the wildfire season in Alberta was declared to start already in mid-February due to warm temperatures, low snowpack and ongoing forecast of drought. So this is something definitely to keep an eye on uh, this coming summer, uh, wildfires in Canada, which last year was a record bad year. Also, um, you know, the growing season is being affected. The bug season, you know, could be a lot worse because cold temperatures kill off ticks and that didn't happen. You know, water levels are also uh, very, very different. You don't have that snowpack melting. The, um, the World Meteorological Association says that above normal temperatures are predicted for most of the globe between March and May as the waning El Nino continues to exacerbate the effects of greenhouse gases emitted by human activities. There's an 80% chance of the El Nino re reverting to neutral conditions by the middle of the year. And there's a chance that it could go to the reverse La Nina later on, but the odds are uncertain. Okay, so basically, um, basically we've, you know, had a extremely warm winter, 5.1 degrees Celsius warmer than normal in Canada and about four degrees Celsius warmer than normal in the US. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what we've got. So thanks for listening. Please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to my PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks again and bye for now.